So look, at the moment with athletes that injure themselves, typically from a rehab point of view, you'll see them on the ground, they will fall down, there'll be some pain. Um, normally how it's happened, there's some idea in our mind that it could be more serious than just a, a simple knock to the knee. Uh, they'll then be taken off the pitch. Uh, we'll, there's some physical tests we can do to determine whether it's uh, the ACL may be involved, but generally the athlete or player the next day will be assessed through an MRI scanner and that will show the extent of uh, damage to the ACL. If it's a full thickness tear and the player is wanting to return back to a pivoting, twisting, jumping sport and at risk of being contacted, the general consensus at the moment uh, or presumption would be that they would need surgery and they would be referred to an orthopaedic surgeon who, and they'll often be under the knife within a few weeks. So in regular Australians, it's a little bit different. Uh, it, it depends really. With Pete, you've got paediatrics, uh, you've got elderly, you've got people that are more active um, and those that are sedentary. Generally, these injuries happen in those that are younger, so younger, active, uh, athletic individuals um, who will injure it playing sport. And generally, again, the presumption is that they would need a full reconstruction in order to return back uh, to, a, to a pivoting type sport. And I think if you were to ask or assess anyone in, in general public, this would be what their perception would be. So in the past 10 years, really the incidence or occurrences of ACL tears seems to be increasing quite significantly. Uh, and the reconstruction rates are also increasing significantly, whereby now in Australia we actually have the title of the highest rates of reconstruction in the world. Uh, and this is obviously a massive uh, cost to society. Uh, in Australia, ours are about 90% of ACL tears will be reconstructed, whereas in Scandinavia and Northern Europe, the rates are significantly lower. So they're about 50%. And it's more of a physio first approach there and they have more up-to-date models and uh, the tracking of injuries is a bit better there as well. So what's driven these rates has been the awareness of the procedure and the availability of it. Uh, in Australia, you can get a, a free GP appointment or rebated uh, GP appointment. You can get uh, a scan, uh, orthopedic opinion and a surgery, yet you have to pay for rehabilitation as treatment. And so I think those elements have helped to increase the rates. So look, it's a good question, like how do we come to this point in history? I think really it boils back to assumptions and theory. So we've come out of a model of healthcare that's been very much based on the, the anatomy itself and if we resected a ligament like the ACL and saw that in a particular direction it was unstable, we would then assume that if we were to get a patient in weight bearing that they would, they would have an unstable knee and they certainly wouldn't be able to uh, theoretically perform at a high level through their knee but then also day to day tasks might even be difficult. And so from there we've had developed surgical techniques to, to uh, provide some stability to the knee and we've had uh, powerful healthcare systems that have been set up to kind of perpetuate this and continue that. And then really in the past 30 or 40 years, all of the research has been heavily biased towards surgery. So uh, the energy, the emphasis, the, uh, co the costs and the funding has all really been towards surgical techniques and graft types. And this is uh, all culminated in us believing that uh, surgery is necessary to return uh, to normal life and indeed sport. So really I'm recommending that any patient or athlete that injures their ACL follow world's best practice, which is to undergo an intense, structured, supervised, scientific exercise program uh, for at least three months and it should normally be guided by an experienced and trained uh, rehab professional, so a specialist physiotherapist or uh, someone that's highly trained or familiar with this research. And from there, it's all about signs and symptoms and if the 
player is coping well, then we would continue to build them up and they can always decide upon having an operation uh, at a later date. But the best studies are showing that if you opt for this approach, it's going to give you a superior outcome even if you do have surgery long term. So it really makes logical sense that you would just wait and assess what the outcome is uh, following what we would do with any other soft tissue injury. Yeah, so well, the first point is that there's a good number of studies now that are showing if left, the ACL can actually heal and with complete full thickness tears can reunite, which we didn't know or the assumption was because of a poorer blood supply that it was impossible. But we're realising that's probably occurring more than we previously thought. So that's the first thing. And certainly if it doesn't reunite, it often can become almost a redundant ligament it, through intense strengthening at the knee, uh, through balance and through proprioceptive exercises. All this information really has, has positive ramifications for the general population and for society in general. And I think it's, it's great that we have this information presented to us now. Following best practice is incredibly positive and powerful and absolutely like a cultural shift is necessary. Uh, but it's a bigger issue maybe than uh, a lot of people might realise. So we first of all, we need, when a patient or an athlete tears their ACL, we need them to get the understanding that the first thing in their mind should be, I need to commit to rehabilitation. And then if we do that first, then already the, the game has changed. I think if following from that, we need not only the patients and the general public to be aware, we need uh, all clinicians, so that would be rehabilitation specialists, physiotherapists, sports scientists, sports doctors, surgeons, uh, psychologists, all, all people involved in the management of uh, someone who has this injury need to be aware of what the, the lack of evidence that's available at the moment and also the quality of the evidence and really there isn't any high quality research to continue a homogenous approach to every single patient and so that's pretty powerful uh, but also we need uh, policy makers to be aware of this information and they need to um, create new pathways so uh, funding for physiotherapy and exercise as treatment for this injury first and patients should be uh, able to access this before they consider anything that's um, you know, more invasive. Significant changes from research to clinical practice can actually take uh, normally about 20 years. So we need to fast track this now and get this information into the hands of consumers, uh, the general public and the media as well is really important. So there's typically this hysteria associated with an athlete that's torn their ACL. But if we, if we sit down and assess the data and the information, the evidence that we have, it doesn't seem quite as catastrophic if we can start rehabilitation and see how the athlete uh, performs, knowing that they're going to have a good outcome either way. So yeah, look, a reconstruction would be nine to 12 months typically, and that is because you've got a graft that's been put within your knee that has to take into the uh, bony tunnels that have been uh, drilled into the knee. And so from that, you need then to strengthen up the knee and build the athlete back into competitive sport. So without having the operation initially, uh, and it, the, the athlete is coping well, it's obviously going to be quicker. Uh, you don't really have that, uh, uh, that trauma from the surgery. You have the ability to get uh, your pain and swelling down straight away and get sh uh, strengthened sooner and your balance back and then your ability to get back onto the park really is often fast-tracked because you know your motor patterns, you know how to move and then it's just a case of psychologically are you ready and then if the knee's coping well then the athletes will be good to go. With elite athletes, uh, it's potentially even quicker. So the, the quickest that I've read is actually uh, two weeks with an elite rugby player 
uh, with a following a full thickness tear and his musculature was strong enough to cope uh, at the elite level. I've, there's a peer-reviewed journal that's shown an English Premier League player return in eight weeks. Now, I should hurry to say that we don't want to rush the rehabilitation. It's not really about that. We want to take our time. But the athletes are, are so strong already and they're in the frame of mind and conditioned to, to get going straight away. So it, it makes logical sense, I think. And the other good thing is athletes are motivated because it's their own body and it's their livelihood. So they really want to get back into uh, activity as soon as possible. So they're quite driven. So that, yeah, there's good potential for them to have quite quick responses actually. The best research that we have available uh, hasn't actually shown any benefit for the addition of the surgery to a high quality structured rehabilitation on its own. Uh, so this is in terms of pain, in terms of uh, symptoms in general, uh, mental health and quality of life, return to sport rates, uh, osteoarthritis and meniscal tears as well as meniscal surgery rates. There doesn't seem to be any additional benefit uh, for having the reconstruction early. There are inherent risks and harms associated with this procedure. There was a really high quality study a couple of years ago that showed that there is actually double the amount of inflammatory markers and response within the knee joint at a five year follow up. So that's an important consideration for patients or athletes that are about to undergo it, the procedure or considering it at least. Uh, psychologically, if you have high fear or if you have poor self efficacy or self-confidence within your knee, you're probably at risk of having a, a poorer long-term outcome as well. There's also just the risk of having surgery. Uh, for having the surgery, you're gonna have increased blood clots. You're gonna have the risk of infection. Where they take the graft from at your hamstring, uh, quadricep or uh, patella tendon, uh, there's risk of damage there long-term permanently. And uh, risk of the muscles that are associated to the tendons repeat straining. So that's also important to know. So absolutely, the sooner the player or athlete can get into physiotherapy and rehabilitation, as soon as that can get started, the better. We can get their pain down, their swelling down, their movement better and them stronger. If they commence that straight away, it'll have a good outcome long term. If we can get their thigh stronger and get them committed to the rehab, it's highly predictive of them having a successful outcome, whether they have surgery or not. And psychologically, we really want low fear. We really want the athlete and the patient motivated to get back to sport and expectations. So if you expect that you're going to get better, you tend to get better. If you expect you're going to have a poorer outcome, you tend to have a poorer outcome. So these things are really important to consider, to consider with an, an athlete or patient. We have to sort of look at the, them as a person and not just the uh, injury itself. No, not at all. I'm certainly not anti-surgery and surgery is always an option, but really the key message for me, for the general public, for uh, patients and athletes and for clinicians that are involved in the management of this injury, if we start with a uh, intense individually tailored strengthening program, we're going to get a superior benefit either way and I think that's a, a fantastic news really for society as a whole.